Hello, hello, oh, wait, I forgot the microphone's over here. My bad, I should usually bring it in a little bit closer. Hello, 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 once again, lads, lads, and lassies, and welcome back to another episode of Dr. Stone. My name's Josh, and we are just going through this season. It's almost done. Season three, part two, is almost at an end. I was gonna say again, but I guess if I wanted to say that, I should have said season three is almost at an end, end again. And honestly, kind of saddens me. <sighs> I feel like we're just getting into a groove of Dr. Stone. I know last episode was this big climactic battle between Senku and Ibarra, but after like eight weeks-ish, I was a little late to the party, of consistent Dr. Stone content, I feel like we're getting into a groove here. You know, like every Thursday, sit down in the chair, watch Dr. Stone. And now, it's ending. But thanks to, um, thanks to one of our patrons and Leaf Door, I do know now that there's three episodes two more after this three including this one uh after this episode we got we got three we have three more episodes guys we have three more episodes so yeah i'm here once again i guess we're in the semi cooldown arc not really cool down not really an arc just like this is the aftermath semi epilogue episode of the entire build up of this ibarra slash medusa arc this new island I was talk. I was literally talking to one of my friends, uh, Kenny. Uh, we were literally just talking about uh, the last episode and what we're kind of hoping and thinking this episode is going to be. We do believe that there's going to be a, a small time skip, just maybe like a couple weeks, maybe a few days, to revive everyone that's been turned to stone on the island because my man Ibarra, he practically won. If it weren't for Senku's quick brain, he would have turned everyone on the island to stone. And Senku was the only one to have found a way to keep himself depetrified. Um, so yeah, we do think there's gonna be a small bit of a time skip, but not too much. We still have, to, I think we, there's still a little bit that we need to resolve, aka who's gonna lead the island now, um, who's gonna stay as a stone statue, who's not, maybe some debates over Hyoga and, uh, Maz, who knows, maybe there's gonna be, like, a little discussion about that within the episode, and, you know, we have a little discussion about Hyoga, I believe, uh, one of my patrons and Leaf Door. And once again, thank you for the shout out. You see, I, I shout out the patrons quite a bit. <laughs> uh, if you want to leave a comment and all that, and you want to get them to shout it out, uh, you can leave a comment down below in the comment section, or you can like 100%. I will like say your name and all that if you're a patron, uh, and we can discuss like that. Uh, th there's some stuff to talk about, but uh, she brought up some very good points about Hyoga that actually kind of retrospectively change my opinions of him, especially like. Now, it's kind of a refresher, but we'll get into that in the discussion portion of the video. But before we get into this, I believe that Anne has left a very, very good comment that perfectly sums up the ending of last episode. I love the ending too. Senku didn't act it back then, but walking around in a world full of nothing but stone statues for six months without any way of knowing for sure that you will ever see another living person again, it must have been traumatizing. The way that it was brought up and then the phone call, just beautiful. And I have to agree, the ending of last episode with Senku looking off into the horizon, so well done. And I feel like that it was the perfect payoff for a very long arc. And an arc that put Senku and the gang through a lot. Now there is a lot more of this comment that I need to go through. That was but a section, a small sliver. And we're not going to go through all the comment uh, that... Uh, and has left behind, but there are some parts that I do want to talk about. Once again, we'll save that for later. Now, let's just get into this beautiful, beautiful series, lads. Chrome? Yeah, Chrome. Yeah, you need another scientist to help you make more survival fluid. <laughs> ah, man, you would know you immediately won after seeing Senku. I survived like a cockroach too stubborn to keel over and die. <laughs> it's true, man. You went through so much and you kept standing. <laughs> Oh, I just realized we're not going to hear this intro anymore. Like, for, like, we got a couple more episodes after this. Now it's time to mass produce it. We can get to work as if we don't connect the pieces in the right order. We'll starve to death. I I must say, I would revive Yuzuriha first. Because she's the best person to put everyone back together. And then... Uh, magma, I guess? Magma and Amaryllis, yeah. Magma for hunting. Physical things, and was for gathering stuff. She would know where to hunt stuff too. Oh my god! I don't think we've even like, revived Francois. She's—I think she's just been <laughs> petrified since the beginning. No. Again for labor, then. 
Sean Bain. Oh my gosh. Is this Rory Chrome's lover? She has to be a former flame. Picked up on that immediately. That girl's actually Senku's ex-wife, or so I've been told. Wait, you didn't know? Oh, I, I guess he wouldn't. Oh, I, I, minutes. While our signal should reach, there's one problem. What's wrong with the Persia? Oh, they destroyed everything. That's great. This much damage will take several weeks to repair. Oh man, we are not leaving this island, are we? I'm kind of loving how proficient this latest team member is. Yeah, new drip. Oh, that cape is so good. That cape is sexy, man. I wonder if they're gonna get. Yeah, okay, yeah, there she is. I was wondering if they were going to do anything with Kirasame. An enemy is always a tough call. <laughs> you should learn to stop and think a bit too. Nah, she's good. Nah, yeah, they don't know that she's good, but she's good. She's valid. Now she's free. So the question is, is she a new crew member? Is she going to stay on the island? I'm, I'd be down for her to join the crew. I'm going to be real. Steamy. Uh, uh, wait, my wound! Yeah, alright. Never a doubt in my mind. Hey, Kohaku's back. Thank you so much, Kohaku. Oh, you had the best plan. <laughs> you ruined it for yourself, man. Oh, yeah. You ruined it for yourself. I was going to say, the music carries a lot. It, it's so good. The hug from the intro. Do I hear a new track? Whoa, you're not wearing your weird eye thing? <laughs> the information you learned from the risk you took gave us. Oh my god. My grandmaster plan totally involved getting impaled by Ivara, which I think we can all agree is pretty darn cool. Oh, at least he's running with it. You need something, right? Damn. Wait, wow. Your first exchange with your ex-wife since all the chaos that happened on the island. Listen, it, 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 it's not it's not like that. It's not like that, Emerus. Ah, uh, the Y man. A stronger signal? No, keep that thing away from it. No, it's going to trigger. Why use the radius? Such a giant it's radius. Insanity. Twelve million and eight hundred thousand meters wide. Not only is it an oddly specific choice, it's also terrifyingly huge. So it can do that. Twelve million eight hundred thousand. Kenny was right. I know that. Oh? Because it's your Senku. Effect 12 million and 800. Yeah, I was gonna say it did sound like Senku. <laughs> Get excited. <sighs> Is Robo Senku canon? Is Robo Senku real? <sighs> Possible this version's a good for nothing fake. Absolutely not. Our it could Senku be an impressionist be like me. I'm a terrible Senku impressionist. <laughs> Shinomia. <laughs> the theories, the theories, they're beating Reddit to the theories. It dips into the same uncanny valley as a Vocaloid. Because it's synthetic. Okay, so it's a fake Senku voice. Bro's using AI in the stone world. Oh, hell nah. Is this dude, like, incredibly smart? Oh, it's so weird seeing Yo without the eye patch. But I do recall the Medusa's shape. Oh, come on. We're saving that for next episode. Actually, the battle animation is going pretty smoothly. I'm not. I'm actually really surprised. Dang, it's actually really fluid. I'm surprised. <laughs> oh yeah, this guy. Kind of got it. Get it. Ah, I give up. Tell us about this strange light that rocked your world. Thank you, kind travelers. I'm surprised Senku still has marks, I realize. So, uh... Oh, what's he going? Oh, mm. what does this mean? I'll save you! No, please, no. I should have never been petrified. Wrong guy. Wrong guy, man. Will not let those look. This guy isn't your master. He's just our resident sleaze bag. <laughs> I'm probably his reincarnation. Please, please stop. Don't, don't try and save this for yourself, man. Good, right? uh, 
from this raining from the sky? That's plenty of useful info and more than enough to help spring. That's terrifying. Let's get moving, guys. Guys, we're going to Skypea. No, no, listen to his story. And they're gone like the wind. We missed out on Y Man talk. We missed out on his story. This guy is well beyond the Earth's surface or even the atmosphere. I won't even pretend like I know what that means, but I'm guessing space? the enemy is really far away. And our results tell us the enemy is a few hundred thousand kilometers above. So if you need me to spell in it the out, sky. he's in space. He's the the, we're going to space, guys! I said it! <laughs> I said it in the beginning of the series! How are we supposed to going to space! <laughs> Oh boy. We're building a spaceship. Time for progress. Cause we're going to the moon. Let's go. Thank God we have two more episodes. They could have ended it with that sentence. <sighs> Guys, I don't wanna say I told you so. But I kinda told you so. Now I hope I said this in a reaction. I'm pretty sure I said this in a reaction. I thought it would be a great full circle thing that we end Dr. Stone in space, whether it be a flash forward or like that's how the series like takes it. I kind of always thought it would be like a flash forward or like we would get civilization to the point of a uh, spacefaring because that was Senku's dream to become an astronaut like his dad. So I always thought it'd be like that, that would be the natural end of the series where Whatever, like we we defeat the Y man, and then we do like a little time skip of Senku getting civilization back to spacefaring. Uh, I, I said that probably in season one. It's been a long time. I feel like I've said that before. I did not think that the main villain of the show, and he is a villain. We will talk. This episode gave us a lot to go over, and we still have some comments from Patreon too. Not too many comments, and I think I'll go through those first, maybe because they didn't really. Uh, they don't really go to this episode in particular, and I'm just gonna try and plug in my mic a little bit, sorry. But, it's a good episode. I was, I was, I'm dreading the end of season three, but based off of how this episode, what this episode did, I am so excited for the next two episodes. We may not be doing some act, we may, we may not be in the action, we may not be in like this immediate plot but the plot is building very very fast <laughs> oh oh man all right so i'm gonna go over shoot now I'll, I'll go over the episode and then we'll do the patreon comments sorry ann but i i i want to talk about this episode it's about this fresh space or at least the moon which that, that's space that is space yeah, no, that's not, I was not expecting to get there within, and it looks like we're going to be focusing on that, because we were going to go to South America, if I remember correctly, that was the original plan, because that's where they found out the detoxification began, that was like the root point, and then we ended up here, and we have this thing. Okay, so I'm gonna just go already. I'm just already gonna assume that the uh, the Medusa rain, the rain of the Medusa, it didn't petrify everyone. It just petrified some people. Probably there's like some people in the forest, or maybe like it just didn't hit everyone in the um, vicinity. So we the, the the people got petrified on the ground. I'm gonna, let's say like 50% of the population got petrified. Um, oh man, the Medusa rain is interesting. That is a terrifying attack because you can't do anything about that. But it also, we've got two big pieces of information. One, a single Medusa has the potential to, um, to, to petrify the entire earth, at least that's the bluff that um, Mecha Senku is saying, the synthetic Senku, the AI Senku. That is a huge detail and either a terrifying, or a, it's a great bluff or a terrifying reality that a single one of those things 
can do that. And we also learned that there's multiples of these. At the very least, they, they rain. But I guess we don't know how reliable Mr. Uh, Medusa's story is. Um, I'm real. God damn. God damn it, Sanku. Why, why, why can't you just sit and listen for, for my sake? Just sit and listen to the whole story. All right? I understand you're excited about the science, but if you know the whole story, you're not going to be going. You're not going to be trying to fill in the gaps with science. You're just be adding more to the story with science. I, I hope we get to. There's two things that we didn't get to hear. We didn't get to hear the full story of um, that one guy, and we didn't get to hear their little talk about the Y man in the uh, the bridge cut away um so i assume that's either going to be a season finale thing maybe next episode thing but yeah, the medusa raining from the sky i feel that's a much bigger thing because that's an aerial attack that can come in at any moment and with quite a bit of force ginro is alive again <laughs> Ah, there was never a doubt in my mind when... I, there, okay, there was a little shock, I'll say. It. There, there was shock when he got stabbed. But, like, it just immediately... Like, they're gonna, they're just gonna resurrect it. Or they're gonna petrify him and resurrect him because of the healing properties. But, man... Man, I just can't stop thinking about the Medusa range from this guy. I, I, that's a terrifying reality that that could just happen at one point. We got Kohaku back... There was a little bit of a time skip, but it was a gradual time skip. Uh, we didn't like we just um, slowly rebuilt everyone uh, and uh, got everyone back together again. Got the band back together. Francois was finally revived, and she is being just uh, the most useful character on the show ever. It's, yeah, <laughs> we need a good cook. First choice. <laughs> I love that she's also like. Um, oh, it sounds like it's gonna take a while. I'm gonna go prepare. <laughs> go prepare the food um but the y man was a big one this episode i it, it did get me i was like oh mecha senku something, something mecha senku i did love that uh the show was actually self-aware of all the theories that would this would come out and they beat the theories to it like senku have a, uh, have a twin brother perhaps uh but that's just funny um but no, it's AI Senku, so we're getting into the age of AI, which means also that the Y Man, the Y Man could be AI, not in the sense of like it's um, like Ultron's like a computer program that. Um, uh, I have a few theories, but everyone on Earth was petrified, but that's on Earth. Apparently, there is some form of space station in the moon. Uh, so maybe this was built in secret. Either way, unless the Y man said it that he would depetrify, or he put himself like on on in like some kind of like uh, like a Captain America sleep, he's dead. Uh, it's been uh, a few thousand years, so I, I think that's enough time for him to become a skeleton at that point. Maybe some dust. Um, so let's just assume. Or that's assuming that okay, never mind. Let's not just so like that's one theory that he's put himself on ice, and he somehow said it that if there's any activity on Earth, then he'll wake up. So he's been awake for these past three years. I don't. I know they said it. But I don't remember how long it's technically been. I know it's been a few years, um, which is something I actually really like about Doctor Stone. They are not afraid to pass time. Sometimes a couple months will go by between episodes, and like at the very, at, we know it's been a couple years since the beginning of the series. I uh, even though like they speed run the mechanics, like yeah, we built a car in like a day. Uh, it feels like tangible. The time that passes it feels real. Um, but so it's, that's theory number one. He put himself on ice, and he revived himself. If there is like some kind of signal from Earth, number two, um, this guy is dead. He was on the he was on the space station. He did it from the space station. Like he petrified everyone from the space station. He's dead, and he has an AI of himself running the space station. Um, and then three, three, I guess it's just that it's an AI um, in general. 
Um, they synthesized Senku's voice, which is an interesting play. I do believe Senku was the first one to talk to the Y man. Like, he would like, grab the microphone and ask questions. So, like, of course, it would grab his voice from there back in the beginning of season three. And then, like, like they said, like, oh, do you think they hijacked the radio? That could actually be this the reason. No, oh, well, could be the reason why, like, that could be the catalyst for Y man waking up now instead of, like, when Senku woke up or whatever. Or instead of, like, going, like, oh, there's people on Earth. It could be, like, Senku and company, Sen Senku and Co. sent radio signals out um, over a large distance. So like the phones, those were fairly small distance, but they sent a radio signal out to the entire world, and that could have been what woke up Y Man uh, if he was petrified and then revived, and that's why he's reaching out now. Also, we do know he's some he is semi antagonistic, or no, not semi. He is antagonistic for because for the reasons that he just outright and said like just petrify the earth one second so for some reason he wants the earth petrified now oh i'm unless this is some kind of perverted like ai of the original guy or some kind of perverted ai i think a lot of my theories before were saying that the petrification of the world was an accident that someone was desperate, someone that they love was dying, and that's why the uh, petrification has so many, um, re uh, ugh, sorry, words are difficult. Uh, that's why the petrification has so many healing factors to it. Um, because why, why? <laughs> um, why would somebody design, uh, if, if you were to, if you wanted to petrify the world, why would you design it to heal everyone? as well uh why not just design it to petrify and if they get revived i guess they get revived but what's the point of um so that could that could just be an accident it could just be a thing like oh yeah well i guess it petrifies you and it heals you too that's uh, that wasn't supposed to happen but it happens i was thinking that it was supposed to be or originally i think my favorite theory was that it was supposed to be um some form of medical technology someone got desperate enough they used it and the world got petrified because of it um and it was just an accident. But now it seems like it's on purpose. It, 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 well, I guess it, it, it doesn't seem like it. it is very much on purpose. Like, this guy did not want to talk. He did not negotiate. He didn't even let out uh, a warning. Automatically, like, petrify the world now. So, for some reason, this guy wants the world petrified. Um, he's li He at least is living or has lived on the moon. So, now we don't know why. We do know his where, but we don't know the who or the why. He's on the moon. Why does he want the Earth petrified? And who is he? Using a Senku voice. It's a good one against the audience. Who knows? Maybe Mecha, who, maybe Mecha Senku is canon. I swear, if they... So they synthesize his voice. They used AI to recreate his voice, right? What if we just make a Mecha Senku to fight normal Senku? creating the Senku off. I don't want that. I don't think I want that. But I, I, could, I guess I could see the show going in that direction. Ah, oh, that'd be kind of funny. <laughs> but that's going a little too far. We don't know what exactly this moon station is. Like, is it a moon base? Is it just the signals coming from the moon? How much of a, like what, what are we working with on the moon? We don't know. Um, but man, that was, Great revelation, it was a great episode. <laughs> I wrote down, why man, Senku? Fake. <laughs> so we just have to wait and see what the show has cooking up for us uh, within the next couple episodes. And I already know it's gonna be an agonizing cliffhanger. I hope we have more Dr. Stone next year, but I'm gonna say we're not gonna get any more until 2025. And what am I? what makes me say that? I'm, I, I just, I believe there's typically like a year or two between anime seasons um when am i here academia end it's like is that 2023 it's 2022 right like season six ended in 2022 or season six i think season six started in 2022 and ended in 2023 so yeah I think we're getting season seven or at least an, we're getting another movie right ah uh, typically it takes like a year or two for an anime to come out 
for a new season. So, um, I guess the good thing is Dr. Stone's manga is ended, uh, which I guess you can take as a good or a bad thing, because typically anime is also used uh, as promotion for the manga, and now that the manga is over, they don't, they're like, yeah, the like, manga is over, why do we need to promote it? Um, but I do believe Dr. Stone's just going to finish. I, I don't think they would leave it open like that. Uh, I think it's getting just too much, uh, it's, just, it's too popular to pull the plug like that uh, right now. Um, and the manga is, they're also like two more, two and a half more seasons. I think what I've heard from people that have read the manga, they say like that's, if they keep the pace that they're going at, two and a half seasons would be finishing up the manga. So while I don't want to see Dr. Stone go, the, the story, at the very, this makes it seem like the story is picking up a lot. And uh, I guess season four, it could be super plot heavy. Season four, well, I, I mean, I guess all of Dr. Stone is kind of plot heavy, but season four, man, I, I don't I don't know if we're going to go to the moon. I don't know if season four is just going to be like building a rocket and then season five we go to the moon. I, I don't know. I, I can't even tell, I can't even joke about the pace of the show anymore. <sighs> Got a lot of questions. Got a lot of questions. No answers. A couple answers. But a lot of questions. Man. That's what I love about Dr. Stone. Like, this is this is technically should have been a cooldown episode. Or this technically should have been a cooldown episode. But the fact that, um, yeah, we just defeated the Petrification Kingdom, right? We're celebrating. Everyone else is, everyone's happy. Uh, this should, should be a cooldown. And then, like, the next couple episodes we go in. Nope. Even though, like, the majority of this episode was a cooldown episode, I would say, that cooldown part was just so satisfying to watch. Like, I could just watch these characters do things. The cast is so large, you can watch, like, all these characters do something and you would never get bored. Um, the slice of life parts of Dr. Stone are always so entertaining because of these characters, like, all their super unique personalities. They bounce off of each other so well and they bounce off of each other in so many different ways. Um, but we were given the cooldown, we were given the slice of life cooldown parts, and now we are going right back into the action. And we may or may not have some new crew members. Now, Ginro's new... <sighs> his new servant, I guess? <laughs> um, I'm going to assume he's going to be a permanent new member. Uh, screen time is going to be a question. I'm not sure if he's going to have that much screen time or how important he'll be going forward um but i i'm gonna guess like he doesn't have a place on the island because this isn't his island anymore he's been petrified for a couple hundred years so i'm gonna guess that he's gonna become a new member of the kingdom of science and then i think a big one is kirasama i was i was gonna say amaryllis but i don't, I don't think amaryllis is gonna be well, actually never mind because i guess we're gonna stay on this island i was gonna say like we're gonna voyage no we, i guess we stay on this island so characters like amaryllis um, Ukiyo, I think, the guy with the star head. I always forget his name. K Emeralds, Ukiyo, and Kirasame. They're all gonna stay. Um, I, I think. I, if we build the rocket ship here, I believe that they're gonna stay. And I guess it's good to have a couple bases, right? Because if he make, if uh, the Y man makes it rain on the Kingdom of Science island, then at least we have this island, and vice versa as well. So, I, I think we'll... I guess... We'll, I don't know if we're going to set Voyage again. Uh, I don't see why. Unless there is a material that the Kingdom of Science needs to build the spaceship um, on a different country or something like that. I, maybe. Maybe there's going to be like a, like a salvage team. Um, but I, I guess... yeah. Maybe, maybe we don't leave the island. Maybe we start building... And then Kirasame, like I'm gonna assume, like if we do leave the island, I think Ukiyo is gonna stay to pick up his father's legacy. Emeralis would stay because uh, I don't think she really has a reason to go with them. I like Emeralis a lot, but this is like she fought for the island. Uh, she wasn't fighting to free herself; she was fighting for the people. She was fighting for the island. Uh, while I would like her to come uh, with Senku and the and Co, I don't think there would be a reason for her to go um outside of just we're wanting like yeah i'll go with you i had fun but i could see her staying kurosame is actually very interesting she's helping kohaku train some of these people 
um, for fighting. So, and like we already know, like as an audience, we knew when Senku was reviving her that she'd be chill. She was tricked. It wasn't her fault. Uh, they didn't. <laughs> King of Signs in the middle, but of course, Senku. He's just a G. He's like, ah, it doesn't matter. We're gonna revive her anyway. And they revived the uh, other guy too. The uh, the the uh, the mule that was used. Poor guy. Um, it seems that they revived everyone but Maz and Hyoga, which I guess they were right. They, yeah, but they're not reviving us. We're too much of a wild card. Unless it's next episode. Who knows? Um, but I could see Amaryllis staying with the Kingdom of Science because her whole thing was being loyal to the Master. And while she had... Oh, no. Ukiyo's the... I don't know why I said Ukiyo. He's the uh, submarine guy. He's the guy with the ears. Um, while she's loyal to Starhead... Um, she was more loyal to his father, and her trust has been broken to a point where she might want to leave. Uh, she might seem lost on the island, so she might want to leave and find a new uh, setting. So we'll have to wait and see, but I could see Kurosame stay, or staying with the King of Science. Um, granted, if we stay on the island, then this entire conversation is mute. <laughs> Um, but yes, I brought up Hyoga and Maz, and that brings me to the Patreon questions, or Patreon comments. A smooth transition, right, right, guys? <laughs> now, these are all from Anne Leafdoor. Thank you so much for leaving these comments. Uh, she even jokes about, like, saying she can't leave a small review. And if you, uh, you see the comment here, or here, I, I, don't, I don't, wherever I put it. Um, yeah, these comments are long. We're going to be touching on some segments of them, but you can read the whole thing here. Or you can head over to Patreon and see all the comments you guys, that you guys can talk to each other. I've already responded to the comments in full. Um, but I do want to talk about a couple things on camera because I think they clarify some stuff. Specifically about Hyoga. For this section, anyway. I did like his character complexity before, though. Hyoga himself was very aware that he was only as strong as he was compared to the people around him thanks to his training with that particular weapon. He even said it when he was first revived. It's been a while, so I get that you forgot some details of Hyoga's philosophy, especially since it only came up in one episode at the end of Season 2. Hyoga didn't want to select only the strong to be revived. He wanted to select only the superior, and call the people he saw as mediocre or less than. With the way he talked, that superiority didn't necessarily need to be in strength. It could be superiority in any skill, direction, or field, in whatever role they took in society. Senku definitely qualified as superior, Gen probably too, Hyuga has that tendency to talk about people as proper when he approves of them, and when not, he'll feel nothing about killing them. Example A, the underlings in Season 1. Ironically, most of the core members of the Kingdom of Science would probably qualify for his so-called selection. They simply became his enemies because they follow Senku's goal of reviving everyone. So yeah, I had completely misinterpreted Hyoga's whole deal, in general. Um, uh, for some reason, which honestly it is on me, because I, I probably just heard him and I heard him out got way too hyped with what was going on around everything and just misinterpreted how he was saying that he was culling the less than not the weak um he wants the superior not the strong which makes him more complex than I originally gave him credit for because I was I thought he was going like ah we're only going to we're going to revive the physically strong and uh, we're going to create a society uh, that will never be burdened by people that are weaker than us. It was, we're going to revive the superior in skills, and we won't be uh, we won't be bogged down by those that are mediocre or can't pull their weight. Which makes me appreciate him a little bit more, and if I rewatch the series, I think... I'll be able to like him a lot more back in season two, especially like season three. Um, now, like when I rewatch the series, I'm gonna be bringing in the information I know about him in season from season three into like season one and two. Um, but yeah, thank you, man. That was that actually clears up a lot, uh, especially for my misinterpretation and my misunderstanding about Hyoga's character and his motivations and goals. Um, Hyoga was not mentioned. Uh, neither was Maz in this episode, so I wonder if. Senku will take the gambit. I think with Hyoga, there's a, a gambit to... I think there's less of a gambit there. I think there's less of a um, a risk. I think Hyoga has... Or I think Senku has earned Hyoga's respect. And as Anne said, uh, a lot of the main Kingdom of Science members fit Hyoga's ideal world. But I think Senku, at the very least in this past episode, while yes, he... Um, like, Senku's incredibly skilled. He is superior in every way, um, according to Hyoga. 
Uh, Senku also wants to revive everyone, which is against Hyuga's philosophy, but I think Senku might have won Hyuga's respect, and that might be enough to not change Hyuga's philosophy, but it's like kind of like Magma. Magma, he's not changed. <laughs> he's still Magma, but he's on Senku's side. Magma's still like a, he's still a brute. He doesn't think very much uh, in terms of like future consequences. He's very narrow-minded, but Senku has earned his respect, so he, for the most part, follows Senku's rules. Um, and he, uh, even if he was going to do something that's not part of Senku's way, like he was going to destroy um, Kirasame's statue, he was going to destroy it, um, Senku is like, nah. And he didn't even throw a fit. He's like, alright, yeah, that's what Senku wants. So I think Hyoga's going to, if we do revive Hyoga, I think he's going to fall a little bit more with uh, Magma's way of following with Senku around. Uh, Maz, I don't even want to take the gambit. I think <laughs> that's too much of a risk, but who knows? I mean, it's Dr. Stone, so I think, I think uh, Senku is a professional at turning his enemies into um, some of his strongest allies, except for Ibarra. Um, again, too much of a risk to bring him back. But yeah, I, I don't know if we're going to bring back Hyoga. I don't know if we'll ever see him again, but I do believe that he can potentially be a key player further on in the future. And then Anne also echoes my sentiments of just 12 episodes being too short. You can see in this comment here, it's just too short. And if we had more episodes, like she says, we could focus more on the main cast. Or I, I get, I don't even know if you, like, can you say like 20 or 20 to 30 characters in, a, in the cast is the main cast? Can I say that? Because um, I, I feel like everyone's a main cast member, but we just cycle like the main five or 10 every now and then. Like Kohaku took a pretty big seat or Kohaku took a pretty big backseat uh, in the second half of the season, along with Ginro, uh, and then of course Rui. I don't even. I don't think she's part of like the main cast. She's more of a side character. Uh, but Taiju, I think finally Taiju was finally brought a little bit more to the forefront within this uh, arc. Uh, Kasaki took a little step back, but he was still there. So like I, I think Doctor Stone, um, like Anne says here, she uh, she can't think of another series that does it like this. I, I think Dr. Stone is a master class at like, how do you write and uh, take care of all these characters and make sure everyone gets the proper amount of screen time. With more episodes, I think you would be able to do that. And I was talking to my friend Kenny the other day. Um, and I told him that we only have, according to manga readers, there's like two and a half-ish seasons. Um, of content, which I don't know if those two and a half-ish seasons mean like two 24 episode seasons and a 12 episode one, or like two 12 episode seasons and like a six episode season. I don't know what that means. I just, everyone was saying like, yeah, two and a half episodes or two and a half seasons. I hope it's two 24 episode ones. But uh, my, my, my boy Kenny and I, we were talking and we both agreed like, I would be so down. I know this might be, this, this, is, a, this is a triggering word be down for some Dr. Stone filler. <sighs> oh, I know, I said I said the word, filler. But like, not filler in the sense of, um, let's just like do um, like an alien arc or something like that. But I'd be down for like um, a couple episodes, when, it, when it's appropriate, all right? Like, not like make an episode about um, like uh, everyone like on Rui's side like don't make an episode like that and like put it in the middle of like the uh, Ibarra war arc but like I would be down to see like what everyone on Rui's side is doing like right now <laughs> now that um the Ibarra stuff is over now that we're in a cooldown session well we're not in a cooldown session anymore but like with that big reveal but like before the big reveal of the Y-Man I would have been down to see like an episode of like how is everyone on the other uh I would say other side of the world but I guess on the other side of Japan um, how is everyone else doing? Let me come back to this. But like, I would be so down for some like really well written, like one off ish, maybe two ish episodes, um, like just side stories of all, all these characters, and like they would just give them so much more time to shine, especially with such a big cast, um, characters that don't get as much screen time. Like, I mean, I, I know I've said Yuzuriha and uh, Taiju a lot, but they can they can have an episode of doing something. Um, oh, what's her name? Uh, Ryusui's butler. Oh, I forgot. But like, have a you can have an episode with Ryusui and uh, the butler uh, doing stuff. I feel like you can do a, great episodes that are like really fun, 
Uh, maybe they could be like 12 minutes, not like 12 minute episodes, but like 12 minute segments. So like um, this group gets 12 minutes, this group gets 12 minutes, and then that, boom, that's a 24 minute episode. Um, and then you can flesh out the cast a lot more, and then you can drag out Dr. Stone so it's not over sooner. <laughs> but I don't know how the pacing of the show is going to go, especially with the, because I've always thought Dr. Stone's pacing is really good. I don't think these episodes would affect the pacing too much as long as they're placed properly. But obviously you can't do them now because uh, we're like, in this crunch time. So depending on how like the future is uh, paced, maybe you can't get away with these episodes. But I would, I'd be so down to see filler episodes and stuff like that. I, I, uh, not filler episodes, just like fleshing out character episodes that aren't part of the plot. So yeah, filler episodes, I know, yeah. But uh, I don't want to see Dr. Stone end, but... You know, if it's not the series finale, it's definitely going to be the season finale. We only have two more episodes after this, and then we have to wait. And I don't know how long we'll be waiting. And uh, there's definitely no no other part of this comment uh, that that there's no, there's nothing there's no other part of this comment that's important. All right, there, uh, what what what's that? I'm probably pointing in the wrong area, but what, yeah, what, what, this part of the comments, nothing important here. You, you don't 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 look at that. Don't look at that part of the comment. All right, no, no promises. Keep an eye on Patreon. But yes, lads, lads, and lassies, if you enjoyed this episode of Doctor Stone, please like, subscribe, comment down below, and like I said before, we do have a Patreon. Um, it's only one dollar to get early access, and uh, it's three dollars for full length. But if full length's not your thing, one dollar, uh, even if you don't think so, it takes us a long way. And if you can't support us, that's completely fine. Just by subscribing and staying tuned on uh, the YouTube, it's all that we need. So thank you all very much for watching, and if you enjoyed this episode, like, subscribe, comment down below, either on Patreon or YouTube, whatever one you want to do, whichever is your, plain, your main platform. And I'll see you all next week. We're in the end game. Two more episodes, guys. Wow. Ah, oh, man. It's ending again, but at least we have hope for another season sooner or later. All right, lads. I'll see you in the next one.